Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Kelly Appeal TV podcast, where we discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly, the Brooklyn Appeal, and Chicago Trial. I will be having a student on the show sometime this week, maybe Sunday, to view the case based on how she sees what's going on in the social work field of you know, education. She'll be giving us some facts about what she knows relating to the controversy of the Chicago trial. Um, and so I want you to stay tuned for that. That's going to be an exciting time. She is um, a almost 4.0 grade average student in her university. So she's going to give us some really good information. In today's podcast, I want to talk about a question that someone stated to me relating to the age of Rashawn Deland Fair. We're going to talk about a few things today. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about um, praying for the victims. And we're going to also talk about a message that I have for Robert. So Rashawn Deland Fair's age did not seem to add up. Jane, her... Um, it didn't add up. So, but before we do that, I was also given a task requesting to pray for R. Kelly's victims. Now, in my opinion, I want to go there. I will not consider them as victims, number one. I'm going to consider them as individuals who made the distinct choice to do what they chose to do. And my grandmother always said, when you're big and bad enough to do what you choose to do, then you be aware that consequences will show up and you better be just as big, bad and bold as you were when you made the choice. So a fair exchange is not a robbery later on down the line. I mean, yes, it's a powerful situation that R. Kelly has to sit there and hear all these lies against him being spoken, saying nothing at all. So he has more patience than anyone could imagine. Cause me under those circumstances, I'm sorry. I would say you're lying. <laughs> I'd be in contempt for blurting out so much. I would be in contempt. Would you be in contempt? You sitting there saying nothing, listening to all this stuff go down, shaking your head, knowing that they know that they're lying. Because Robert understands what really went on. He was there. Hearing those who were at one time close to him lie about things that only the two of them know about. Mm, it's sad. So I'm not buying into the fact that R. Kelly is the man on the tape. I'm just not going to buy into it. However, there are those who ask why Robert was so adamant to purchase these videos back at almost a million dollars. You got $65,000 um, or you say you're going to pay over hundreds of thousands or and then you only pay $65,000. Um, that is where I feel a little bit. I'm not understanding. It takes more to come out and be unsealed by prosecution from 2008 for me to even make that decision decision as rationally as I can. But um, getting right to the situation at hand, it is hard for me to wish good on liars, deceivers, and flat out manipulators due to either an arrangement from Asa or money from Asa. I mean, the family was still connected to R. Kelly until 2019. I don't know how I can jump in and observe this situation and say that Robert is 100% at fault here because I know I would, I'm not friends with my perpetrator, with the woman who laced me I forgive her because I am not carrying all that burden with me because I got enough on day to day living. But the woman who almost got me 30 years of my life incarcerated, 
I'm not friends with her. Mm-mm. I don't want to have nothing to do with her. I did feel empathy for her because when I was incarcerated based on karma and what comes back, she lost her two of her sons in two days. One went to rob a dope man and got killed. The brother turns around and decides that he is going to go retaliate on the dope boy and he gets killed the next day. So see, that's why I don't put the my emotions into what other people do because that's their karma. You know, everybody is here to learn a lesson. And if it's all an illusion and we are only here temporarily, then why am I going to lose my freedom? Because I want to go get you for doing something wrong to me. I just won't put myself into that position anymore. But I am 100% responsible for my consequence, you know. Um, so I feel the family was still connected to Ori Kelly until 2019, until the situation came up. Probably when I also decided to tell them to stay away from him. Prosecution started looking at this and said, OK, lights, camera, action. It's time for you to remove yourself from him. The great Godfather. We reviewed the Asa Cruel motion on the conversation and the link is in the description box below. We have the conversation there. So go back and check it. Click on that and you'll hear the conversation with Asa Cruel, the way the prosecution set it up. But I believe there is a lot missing from that motion. A lot of sealed information. So it's important to shun the very appearance of evil. And this is evil in the making. So I am not going to do anything but meditate on the positive outcome of the person or group of individuals when the truth comes out. I do believe in the positive outcome of Robert and Daryl McDavid and June Brown. I will also meditate upon the understanding of the truth coming out and that whoever holds guilt due to the lies they may have told may the just and right person be vindicated or in other words cleared of the lie when i went to google to find the actual birth date of jane or rashonda landfair there was no age of fact because anyone when you google someone who is involved in either a court case or anything. If you even look my name up, you're going to get my date of birth. You're going to get the basic stuff. That's public knowledge. But for her, there were no age of fact, no birth date. So let's look at the age factor. If someone is born in 1985, they would be 37 years of age today in 2022. Now you subtract and go back to 1994, they would be nine years old. Is this the age that the mother told her daughter to go or auntie told her daughter to go and ask Robert if he would be the godfather? Nine. So in 1995, that would make you 10. 96, 11, 97, 12, 98, 13, 99, 14, right? 2015. So the first time they became intimate, according to her history, her recent testimony, not the historical 2008, but the recent testimony was, I think she said 15. Was that right? Please put that in the chat box if you know the accurate year that they became ultimately intimate. While you're doing that, I'm gonna share that Google states the answer to the question, when did R. Kelly get accused of urinating on Jane? The answer is 2002. In his hometown, Chicago, Kelly was indicted on numerous charges with children uh, after a notorious tape surfaced and circulated showing a man, you know, being intimate 
with and urinating on the female whom prosecutors said was about 14 years of age. You should know definitely about, about. So she could have about been legal age, right? So if you remember back in the motion, he said he never became intimate with these people until they were of a certain age. So it would take two years to find out and be indicted. And what year was it when the tape was first found? See, none of this stuff comes into play with prosecution. And I hope Bonjean is really asking these questions for this situation because something does not add up at all. And I thank the Kelly Nation supporter that actually shared this with me. I never really paid any attention to go back and review the years, but everything is so confusing. There is no legal birth date on her on Google. There is no type of information that depicts the actual day of the video. And you know, if you have a VCR and you have a VHS, one thing that VCRs did back in the day was record the date, the time, and you know, what if you were under standard VHS or high definition. So I believe that that video since it's being aired and shown, should have the date on the actual video footage, right? It'll it'll put it up there all the way at the beginning, at the very, very top of the video. So I'm amazed to see what happens when they watch this video. And if anyone can see the actual date that this was taken, and record it because if that was the case, the date and the time is a valuable piece of information because what's going to happen is you're going to see the date and then you figure it out as far as the age is concerned. So I hope anyone who's going to the Chicago um, court case watching the trial in the courtroom is paying attention to that. Hit me back if you see it or if you don't. So it would take two years to be found out and indicted. So the year that the tape was first found is the question. Something does not add up at all. So you do the math and tell me what you're going to find. I also want to say that this week will be a bit easier week to reflect upon information as deliberations within the Robert Sylvester Kelly case continues, it's going to be a lot easier than it was listening to what prosecution had to say, but that's as strong as they are. It's over. It's over. These people are going to tell you that this is all we have. Ta-da! <laughs> Here comes the show. Ta-da! It's going to be an easier week to reflect upon the deliberations within Robert Sylvester case as it continues because prosecutors and defense will have their time in court to request information. And I'm sure Bonjean will be getting to the bottom of this age thing, this video standard. If the video is him, I wouldn't be surprised if they would not ask to have a um, examiner come in and actually prove that that's not Robert on the tape or if it is him on the tape. That's the only way I'm going to believe anything is to have evidence, forensic evidence stating, yes, that is him or no, that is not. So I'm not even looking at the tape itself because that's going to work itself out in appeal. I'm not going to burn my brain to look at that small piece of situation. Prosecution calls evidence. So I'm sure Bonjean will get to the bottom of it. The unsealing of what is there in prosecution should be put on the back burner for the trial, for the appeal until the verdict of jury. Because if they're not going to allow prosecution to unseal this information 
then we're just going to sit back and wait for that to be put on the, the appeal process. And we're going to keep moving forward right along with this case. Because if we don't, we're going to miss something. From there, Bonjean will know how to appeal this case in and of itself. So let her do her job. It will be interesting to see what goes on this week at trial. I will keep you posted from the docket and motion entries that are filed. I am not, I do not have the quality time to put towards reading court transcripts. There are many people on YouTube willing to do that. All hats and kudos to them and their likes and their, their subscription increases because that is a lot, a lot of work. <laughs> so no need for duplication. Let them do what they do. There should be some unsealing of documents that should be part of this week's deliberation. If not, the government is hiding something or they have nothing to show. What are your views on that? Because I'm super excited to see how the criminal justice system does this. What goes down the second week of trial? <laughs> I want to get your point of views in the chat because this is historical information. It is going down in history. So feel free to put your information out there. So while you're doing that and you're sharing all your good information about what your feelings are specific to what we're speaking of right now, um, that would be greatly appreciated. All others will be deleted because we don't have time. We want to keep the flow of information going so that when people look at it, it makes sense. So, yes. Now I want to conclude this podcast with a message to Robert Sylvester Kelly. I am hearing that he knows about us here at R. Kelly Appeal TV. So last night I said that I would be starting up my daily notation of what we're feeling as a collaboration on the channel. And you can feel free to put your information in as well. But I use the platform to write journals many years ago in my life and it clears my mind so tremendously and helps me figure things out. Now, as you know, my whole live situation is unavailable to me right now. So premieres is what I do. But I give shout outs to the individuals who make this channel active. And uh, right now, I want to take the time to give a shout out to those who were part of information that was shared as of yesterday. And yesterday we talked about the Jennifer Bonjean um, conversation and how immunity is working. But I want to go here to Bonjean in the live chat. And I want to give a shout out to those individuals that made that chat blessed. Okay. Um, I want to give a shout out to Big Mama, Mental Alchemist, Alma, Brooklyn, Stephanie, Ladybug, Ella Soul, Mila, Matt, Monet, Daddy Lolo, Sherry. Standing in the gap for R. Kelly, Switzerland, in the house. God bless you. God bless you. Glad you're here. Stephanie, you know, and many, many, many more, especially my students that sit in the background as anonymous people because we have our own platform where we meet and we do our Zoom meetings privately together. So we have a collaboration and then the offset or the spinoff to some of the information that you hear on R. Kelly Appeal TV 
has been a impromptu, if you will, for what we have discussed on the legal end. So we don't want to make it all, you know, dry and boring to where no one wants to actually hear what is going on because it's over their head. So we try to bring it down and make it as simple as we can. So when I'm reading this information to you, I want you to figure out how you can write your own journals and put into place ideas and perspectives that have you baffled so that when things come out, you are able to say, oh, I thought about that a weeks ago. I wonder what would happen. And there it is. It shows up. So when you write things, it's like you're putting it on camera. And then to think about how it reflects itself and how it manifests itself within weeks or days or months or years, you go back and you listen to it, you reread it and you see everything that our minds can fathom can come to be. So let me know what you think about this message I have to Robert today for August 20th, 2022. This is copyright accredited. So dear Robert, I am in this new space in life as you are as well. Many who began with us are either gone on eternally or have lives of their own. I once wrote a poem titled, When All That Remains Is Left on the Mantel, in a mantelpiece at the fireplace topping, place where we put all of our memories, right? As we live through achievements, we place it on the mantelpiece. Our pictures of children who grow for 18 years and then leave the nest. Here we remain, looking at memories that once meant everything to us. Now we're at a time when the phone doesn't ring as much when visitors are very far and in between, all we eventually have left are the very ones that exist around us today. The parties are smaller. The dinners go to waste because things aren't as we used to envision them. They don't eat what we eat, what we ate. They don't like the seasonings we grew up on. The music no longer feels the same. New connections are wonderful, and I love those. Time and space can erase so much, Robert. So what is left to hold on to? What's there left to hold on to? Robert Sylvester Kelly, my heart feels for you. I know the challenges you face, you never expected to feel that. We all are growing in this, you as well. The, see, this lesson teaches me that even a star can fall to the center of the earth. I wanna let you know that the existence of a star is phenomenal. Because the more massive the star, the faster it burns up its fuel supply. And the shorter its life. The most massive stars can burn out and explode in a supernova after only a few million years. You must have existed at least that long to come back to this planet the way you sing, the way you do what you do, like you did. You are the super giant star. Just as human stars have a lifespan and the process is called a life cycle of a star, you came you experienced, 
and life will never be the same after this because it's supposed to be that way. The involvement is what happens. We evolve. The involvement is what happens. Your energy will always be that of a star child. You gave us so much, Robert, through your love, your intellect, your music, your style, your swag, that you have enough music to raise awareness of those who never met you, even though they tried taking your catalog Your name is there in the book of life. And this is why it's being documented in court so that the reality of life will always have the truth there. Not the allegations, not the indictments, not the convictions, but the legal parts of what's not there relative to who you are. You have enough music in this world to have to raise awareness of those who never got to meet you or never will get to meet you. They will know your name, the good, the bad, the ugly. Hoping that many continue to love you. My grandson at age 12 today, will now know you. The good, the bad, the indifferent. Hoping that he will learn from any mistakes he recognizes within what I speak in this house about you. I know you will come out victoriously. And when you do, there will be much love waiting for you on this side. So be strong, be courageous, and wiser in all you do. Get all the help and education you can there. And may your star continue to create love as we always need in either olden days or new ones as well. To all Kelly Nation supporters, please know We are blessed to be here at this time to be an observer and support our brother, Robert Sylvester Kelly. And we are blessed to have experienced this life with you and your music. That is something that can never be taken away, can never be etched from our memory. And we are so grateful to you. Thank you. And you have a blessed and wonderful day. So that's what I wrote him. I will continue to express myself because that's the only way that I know how to do it is to write it, to feel it passionately within words. Heal that way. And there are many other ways that we can also project even how we're feeling about Robert. So I thank you for being on this journey with me. I'm not going to hold you long because we have a next week. We'll be on possibly every day. You will be able to catch whatever comes out between six o'clock and my latest upload will be 9 p.m. That's the latest that you'll see a premiere from me. Maybe somewhere in between that earlier. It might be earlier in the day um, in the morning, but It's whenever the information comes out, I'm going to have it there as a premiere so we can discuss it here at R. Kelly Appeal TV. Thank you all for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. We really appreciate you and our our student that is going to be coming on. I will keep you posted on that. That's, you know, a definite conversation I want you to be a part of, especially my students. Um, Well, we thank you so much. You have a wonderful, blessed Sunday. And as always, keep it 100. And we will see you next time. I'm going to leave a little space for the ability to write more feelings about what we just expressed. 
I'm going to give you about five minutes before I close out the chat box so you can keep typing and all will be put in the box. Okay. All right. And we'll see you next time.